Tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit about reviews and Yelp. I was talking to a, a, somebody in the industry who runs a successful repair shop, and I have great respect and admiration for the job he does. And we were talking about Yelp, and he and uh, one particular business that is, we will we will prove it eventually, it's cheating the fuck out of Yelp. Like they have something like 235 star reviews. If you're in specific sec sections of California, sure, maybe I believe that. But here. Call me crazy, but a place that opened a year and a half ago, having more reviews than every business in in, the, in this zip code, including the ones that have been doing this since 2001, having more reviews than all of them combined. Something fishy's going on there. And for them to be a consistent five star, like it, it, the, getting you know three to five new reviews a day, I am sorry, something's wrong. There. Anyway, so we were talking about it, and I was talking about you know my business, and I said you know I've never paid for a review, I've never given somebody a discount for it. I've never coerced or guilted them into it because I did something special or for free. And I never let them leave it in front of me. You know, I don't have a little station where somebody can log in a Yelp or register or where we help them register for an account so they can leave a review. They can go home and leave a review if they feel the service was worthwhile. Now, if you don't believe this, you can look through all the different businesses that do this in the area. You, I, right at the time of this writing, also just to make something clear, we're a four and a half star out of five star rated business, which is almost as good as, you, as, good as it gets when you're dealing with the when you're dealing with the people in the spoil, a particular spoiled neighborhood. And especially when you have the amount of business we do. Four and a half stars is great. So I'm not saying this because I have any sort of vested reason to hate review sites. Because you'll see people rant about review sites and you'll read their page and it'll be all one star. And you know, maybe there's a reason people hate you. But here, I feel that this is a fairly objective set of points that I'm going to be pointing out in this video. So yeah, if you, if you look at our page, you'll notice that there's, let's say, 71 reviews and 26 or 28 filtered. Yeah, this differs from businesses where you see like 30 reviews and you know, 90 to 100 of them filtered, or other businesses where you see 69 reviews and 280 of them are filtered. Um, they're doing something fishy there. You know, they're calling Yelp every time somebody leaves something bad. Or maybe they're having people leave reviews right in front of them that were paid to with the same IP address. Or whatever it is. I believe in earning reviews the hard way, the genuine way, and it's actually worked out pretty well because for all the businesses that have paid for them, for all the businesses that have lied and cheated the way to reviews, for the most part, not only are they lower rated in this business, they actually have less reviews. So in the long run, a success has been granted to the, to the honest people. But one of the things, again, what he said is, I don't feel bad at all for people who cheat or manipulate the Yelp system, and here's why. I have no respect for it. It is a very, and it's like it's like high school. It's a popularity contest. It has nothing to do with providing good or bad service. And a lot of the people on there are cliquish and immature, and just per, you know they just enjoy uh, fucking with other people. I'd like to talk about this a little bit. See, because honestly, well, I enjoy Yelp as a medium. You know, I, I hate the Yelp leaders. Uh, some of them, some of them, and I, I hate some of the Yelp culture. I like Yelp uh, for what it does. You know, it, when you Google my, my name, my, my full name or my business name, for the most part, Yelp is going to give you a better impression of me and my business and more confidence in me and my business than it would have if Yelp did not exist. And for that, I'm grateful. But one thing that I notice with Yelp that I don't really notice with, let's say, City Search, that I don't notice with Google Maps back, you know, in 2008 and 2009 when more people were kind of using that stuff than Yelp, is is some of the clickishness, is some of the high school like behavior, is and above all, the instinct to become judge, jury, and executioner of the small business, the the attitude and the culture that everybody is a detective, that you're no longer walking into a business and just having a regular experience, that you're becoming this detective that looks for things and notices things that you wouldn't before so that you could talk about them and post them and seem clever and cool for the fact that you've described them to people. And that you feel like you are this genius, muckraking journalist from you know, the, the, the 1870s discussing the terrible conditions in the, in, the steel working, in the steel mills that the Irish people are, are, are dealing with. Like that, that, you, that, you're, that your little two or three paragraph you know, diatribe about this business is equal in quality to, to that muckraking journalism. And I'm here to tell you that no, it's not. Uh, you know, there are reviews where I've pointed out on my blog. 
where let's say one person said fifty dollars to recover data I could do that in my home for all of 45 minutes. This place clearly overcharges. And my blog post was saying, you know, you are a fuck... It, it didn't say that, that many words, but it's essentially saying you are a fucking idiot. Uh, if you can do that, you know, come here. I have a job that I can offer you for $75 an hour. If you can offer a component or a level data recovery services uh, for $50, then, you know, I have a job for you at 75 bucks an hour, and you're going to get good pay here because I could use somebody who does that. In reality, this person had no fucking idea what they were talking about. They had no idea anything about the industry, but they were a Yelp leader. So their review was allowed to stay posted, even though it was one or two star, and clearly ridiculous. Now, what happened, literally uh, one or two days after I posted this blog about Yelp leaders, one Yelp leader starts a fake review. I know it's fake because I was actually here during the time frame in which this woman claims that I wasn't here. So I was sitting in that little 300 square foot area that amounts to the front of my store where my chair is facing the door and she claims that for 20 or 30 minutes I just ignored her. And I, I responded and I said, you know, th that is just not true. Like, no. Uh, a, everybody who walks in the door here is money and I treat them. You know, I treat them nicely, but I also treat them as money. I'm not going to let money sit there for 30 minutes where, you know, the wind or the air conditioner can just blow it away. I'm going to... It, greet the money, pick it up, make sure it, it stays in front of me. And <clears throat> then, two days later, I get the exact same review but from a guy. And I'm wondering, you know, I've been sitting here this whole time. I don't think I'm going crazy and I'm just, uh, I'm having seizures while these people are walking in my door. So I do a little bit of investigating and I notice this person is also Yelp Elite and has maybe five or ten people on his friends list. And one of those people was the woman that just left that bad review two days prior. And now... It's really starting to click. And this is kind of bullshit. You know, that's the kind of shit that would happen in high school. You know, you, uh, you, you, break, you break up with Jenny the cheerleader, and then, uh, you know, her two friends on the squad winds up, uh, you know, screwing with you or, you know, shooting spitballs at you in class or, you know, telling rumors about your small penis to everybody else. And, you know, it's, it's just silly high school-like shit. And, oh, and but what really gets to me is that muck, that uh, muckraking journalism uh, that, that that you see there, that real wannabe muckraking journalism, where somebody just thinks that they've found out this great secret about this place that rips people off or does this, that, and the other, and they're going to expose it to everybody. You know, reviews used to be about did I have a good experience here, or did I not have a good experience here. They used to just be commenting on the experience that they had, and I feel like Yelp has kind of uh, change the dynamic of, of what is considered a quality review or an elite uh, type of review by, uh, by implying that you, you need to have this kind of muckraking journalism in the review in order for it to be considered really amazing. And the problem is a lot of people who don't know what the motherfuck they are talking about, who don't have the qualifications to, to make the judgments they're making, wind up making these ridiculous judgments. And the second part of it is, it wasn't until Yelp that I actually had people directly bargain with me for pricing. I, I honestly, I have thankfully, thankfully, I've managed to have these reviews either erased for, or flagged because the person was so stupid that they actually managed to post in the fucking review that they were blackmailing me. But I've had people say, you know, I don't want to pay $120 for this. Like, I'm leaving, if you're going to charge me that, I'm going to leave a bad review on Yelp. And this, you know, this didn't happen to me on, let's say, Yellow Pages. This didn't happen to me on Google Places. You know, a lot of shitty things happen on Google Places. I've had 30 or 40 reviews held for one year. I've had my reviews given at Chinese restaurants. And there's posts on this if you just Google my name in Google Places. But I never really had people doing that kind of shit. And this goes back to my last video about you know, people taking advantage of the of-service technicians who want to be of-service, who want to make you happy. Well, you know, I... I don't reply, I don't respond to blackmail. Uh, and, you know, this one guy uh, that used to work at a company that my tech Milan worked for said, you know, people would walk in and say, you know, I want to know what's wrong with this and I want it done immediately. Where, you know, he had to disassemble the entire machine to figure this out. And on this particular machine, it would have taken 40 minutes. And he goes, sir, I have 40 machines in front of you. I can have this estimate done by the end of the day. And he goes, I want it now. And you go, well, if you want it now, you can pay the rush fee like everybody else. And you go, if you're going to make me pay a rush fee, I'm going to leave a bad review. Milan has a great reply to these type of people. He looks at them in a manner that makes them feel ashamed.
for who they are. He brings them back to that feeling of being in first and second grade where they know they're doing something wrong and they know they're being a shit. And he'll say, you know, you can uh, wait in line with everybody else. You can pay the fee. I do not, repl I do not respond to blackmail that won't affect everybody else that's already in line. I'm not going to push yours to the front of the line just because you blackmail me. That guy never left a bad review because he, again, he, he was, it was point. It wasn't just curse that. You know, Milan pointed out why he was being a shit, and then he made that guy feel like a shit, and then you know he, he shut the fuck up. Um, it was. It wasn't really until Yelp started becoming popular that there was direct blackmail uh, based on reviews, or people were actually saying, you know, I'll leave a good review if you happen to do X. I'm not going to do X to get a good review. Fuck you. Uh, this this goes back to a personal topic that I haven't made a video on when it comes to dating. I don't want this to be just about men uh, giving something to a girl. You know, this can also be about women who want to give something to a guy. You know, I would rather offer a woman, uh, you know, $200 in dinner or in, you know, going out and having fun than have her ask me for $5 worth of something or take it upon herself to take the credit card off the banister in my apartment and spend $5. I would rather give somebody 200 than have them ask or feel entitled to or blackmail for five. And the same is true here. If somebody's going to say, oh, well, you know, I'll leave you a good review if you do X, where X is usually something that costs money or that takes more time, they can go fuck themselves. But I will do that for them without them asking, just because I want to do that. I want to help people and give them the best service. But as soon as you start you know, uh, go walking that fine line between being the judge, between being a regular customer and being and being that Yelp elite judge, jury, and executioner like a customer, I'm going to point that out to you, and I am not going to I'm not going to abide it, and I, I'm not going to fall for it. You know, I, I don't want to deal with people who walk in and see themselves as the judge, jury, and executioner. I have low respect for those people. I may be judging you in my mind based on the service that you give me. But and when I walk into a business, but I'm not going to make it obvious that how well you uh, crumble to my demands will <clears throat> so will affect. But I'm not going to make it obvious that how you crumble to my demands will affect your public image. Uh, that is a power trip, and that is something that again seems specifically unique to Yelp elite culture, and I don't appreciate it. And <clears throat> you know what? I, I honestly don't care if you manipulate the Yelp system as much as you want, because as time goes on, I'm seeing it uh, as that. And people will go, well, Yelp is a great site. It's just a review site like any other site. So what is it about Yelp in particular that appears to attract uh, these, br these brands of people and these brands of scum? To be honest, I don't know. And, and, I, and it would be great if somebody could help point this out to me or or comment on it, or tell me what I'm doing wrong or saying wrong, because I want to learn. And again, I'm not saying that Yelp is all bad. I'm not even saying that I hate Yelp. I dislike one particular aspect of, uh, of its culture, but I don't hate all of Yelp. You know, I, again, when, when I think that when somebody looks from my, from my name or my business, that the fact that Yelp exists is a positive thing for me. Again, it ranks me above other businesses. It ranks, it shows how many people have been happy with what I've done, and it shows the ratio of happy people to pissed off people, and it, it, you know, it shows that that ratio is in favor of, of them feeling trustworthy and confident in leaving something here. And I, again, for that reason, I'm happy that Yelp exists, but I, I'm not really happy about this subculture of Yelp, and and I'm really curious as to what attracts these people to Yelp versus other other forms of social media for reviews and I'm really curious you know in terms of when somebody hasn't gotten the discount that they wanted or they didn't get something done faster than the time frame that they were given why is it that uh, you know this, this is a specific idea that the second they get home they're leaving that one star review because it's just gonna burn that business why does that seem more unique to Yelp than uh, to other than to other review sites Give me some insight, give me some ideas, and give me your thoughts. And I want to clarify something here. I I'm not trying to get on a soapbox because my business has been destroyed by Yelp. You know, there are people that have 30 or 40 one-star reviews, and, you know, their calendar just uh, goes empty, and they find it harder to pay their rent. You know, those those places, um, some of them really fucking earned it, uh, you know, when, when you get to that point. You, sometimes you've really earned it. But... <clears throat> 
and it, I don't expect to, you know you to believe all all of what I'm saying saying at the moment. But at the time of this video of July 5th, 2013, we have a business that's rated five star on Google Places with over two dozen reviews. We have over 70 Yelp reviews and over 60 of those are five stars with a four and a half star rating. The fact that these mediums exist is helpful to my business and I'm, I, I'm glad that they exist. I'm not creating this video because I, I'm some scorned uh, business owner who feels that, like he's been cheated or wronged by these websites. You know? For the most part, the you know the dickheads that that do take advantage of the system are are few and far between, and they don't really they don't really matter when you get to the point of having seventy plus reviews uh, uh, to most people. Now, there's the other side of the coin, the good side of Yelp that I want to discuss. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in order to make this example, I have to talk about another business, and this is a very very morally gray area because it can be perceived as bad-mouthing on purpose and I really don't want to do that. As fun as it is to bad-mouth people who've personally uh, done something wrong to me, I don't like the idea of it because again other businesses, it, this is a very sore spot. <clears throat> regardless of how successful you are and regardless of how right you are and regardless of how many good reviews you have, when you get a one star from somebody who's really pissed off and angry it's always a kick in the balls and if you say that it isn't you're you're just lying or you're trying to have this some sort of fake sense of manhood when you get a really angry one or two page one star review regardless of who's right and regardless of what happened it's always a kick in the balls <clears throat> and there's one store that I'm gonna discuss to get to give a point one of the good points of Yelp to talk about one of the positive aspects of Yelp here it's called the Mac support store and the only reason I, I don't feel incredibly guilty using them as an example is because there's a parts invoice from 2011, which is two years ago, for about 400 bucks, they still haven't paid me. And there's a, there's a list of people during a, a time period that we had billing issues with our credit card processor. And just about every real company has actually cleared that up after contacting them and after mailing them a copy of the invoice and how it wasn't paid and offered them a chance to check their bank records. And this is the one of the only businesses left that hasn't. You know, I, I've long since given up on collecting. Like maybe half a year or a year ago, I've given up on it. But yeah, at this point, that's one of the reasons I just don't feel bad using them as an example. So when you Google Mac support store, or when you Google, let's say, MacBook repair in Brooklyn, they're probably one of the top results, and that gets that gets you a good volume of business. And when you look on a lot of social media websites, you'll see a ton of uh, good reviews for this business, which is good. But then you get to Yelp and you see 15 or 17 reviews that are just a fucking nightmare. And you look at the filtered ones and all the filtered ones are also fucking nightmares. And, and what happened to this business is the same thing that happens to a lot of other businesses that I'm not going to mention out of professional courtesy. Again, I don't really find the need to re reciprocate professional courtesy when somebody owes me money over a two-year time period. But uh, for other businesses, there are a lot of other businesses where you'll, you'll look them up and they'll have all these amazing reviews and whether it's because those websites allowed reviews from the same IP address to go up, whether that website allowed new members who weren't active to post reviews and have them unfiltered, whatever it is, those websites made it easier for the, for the, for the business to game the system. And that results in a lot of fake shit, a lot of fake good reviews. So let's say you're looking for a particular let's say you're looking for a particular bakery to have a birthday cake made at and there's four bakeries in your area and of those four bakeries they all have 20 to 30 reviews that are all four and a half to five star how the fuck do you pick the bakery but then you look at them on Yelp and you'll see two of those bakeries are one star with 180 reviews one of them is four and a half star with 10 reviews and the other one is four and a half star with 80 reviews then it gives you a little bit of a better idea now Yelp system it honestly is a bit of a pain in the ass and the culture at Yelp can be a pain in the ass, but for whatever fucking reason it is, they have a good way of getting down to the truth. Even though you have a lot, all the blackmailers, and you have all the people who think that they're the world's most, you know, they're the world's smartest detectives at whatever business they're walking into, even though they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. For whatever it is, Yelp often brings out the truth where other review sites fail. And I'll tell you right now, when I look up three or four different businesses, I looked up three or four different airlines, for flying back home and they all have the same reviews and then I go to Yelp and I look up that service in that area they were spot on in several cases you know it was they were really spot on 
and it told me uh, it told me things that I wouldn't have found out had I just used the standard review websites. Call it a combination of their review filter, or call it a combination of even the Yelp culture that I'm sitting here bitching about. But it really often does its job of revealing the truth about a business. Uh, and it really does its job of, uh, of allowing me to figure out who I want to use a little bit better.